I want to talk about long-term investing. I read a story in Investopedia by Lisa Smith. It was called Long-Term Investing, Hot or Not? And the point of the story was the numbers don't lie. It recently, according to quantitative analysis of investor behavior, a study by Dalbar, the Boston company, looked at returns over the latest 20-year period. The average equity investor earned a 3.49% total yearly return, but the S&P earned 7.81. So how does the average investor get a 20-year return less than half of the S&P 500? I think you know the answer. Dalbar reports the average equity investor purchased the fund and held it for just 3.29 years before selling it. And that was during the good times. The holding period fell to 2.5 years during bear markets. Retention rates peaked from 2004 to 2007, went up above four years. But the 2008 crisis saw those ratios drop down a little above three years. Each time period suggests that the average mutual fund investor doesn't get the, the whole objective of long-term investing and the risk involved in chasing short-term performance. You gotta tell your clients, it's not your job to buy someone the best fund, it's your job to buy someone the right fund. That's why they're paying you a fee. The concept of selling the fund you just bought in order to buy something different, that comes from the idea that better returns can only come if you hold the right fund. It's not the case. People look for the most desirable investments, they turn to historical performance. The rear view mirror is the guide. You know what the five star funds are all about. They're all looking for hot performance. I wanna trade what I've got now for the next big thing. And that, says Lisa Smith, is the classic mistake. By the time that they're, they're even aware of a top performing fund, they're looking at last year's winner. That's the rear view mirror. The gains have already happened. The folks that make money in the market are the ones that got in a long time before. So what happens is investment gets overpriced, overvalued, they start down, and people think it's the perfect time to buy them, and, and, and instead they, 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 they should be selling them. Dalbar demonstrates it's precisely the time that far too many investors send their dollars in the wrong direction. They buy an investment that's unlikely to repeat its past performance anytime soon. If they do manage to grab the tail end of an up market, they hang on too long and don't sell. It's just fear and greed, fear and greed. Of course, fear is a bigger emotion than greed, but greed holds them up. They hold the investment as long as the price is going up and they keep holding it on the way down. And that's, so doesn't anybody win in this thing? Well, there's no doubt that some investment managers beat the benchmarks. Some even beat the benchmarks for a period of time. But even Warren Buffett said Lisa has down years. So it's not realistic to expect any investment strategy to perform consistently forever. There are good years and there are bad years, and a bad year doesn't mean it's a bad strategy, it's a bad year. We all know the phrase, the trend is your friend, the long-term trend is your friend. Well, short-term market performance is unpredictable. There are daily price swings and it's irrational and that drives people crazy. The long-term investors get in, they, you, they swear to you they're long-term, you get them set up long-term and they get caught up in short-term distractions. So if they want to get a better sense of the long-term, they get to look over a 20-year period. Over 20 years, the numbers move up. Yes, there are peaks and valleys, but overall the direction is up. So people have to take, care, take advantage of long-term trends when, when planning the strategies. They gotta accept the fact that what you suggest for them won't always be the right place at the right time. And that's why they don't wanna own the hot investment. You can't act like an amateur and chase short-term performance, you gotta be a pro. And pros set long-term goals and choose a strategy that has the highest possibility of meeting that long-term goal. As Lisa Smith said, make logical decisions, not emotional reactions. So think about inflation, don't count on cash to appreciate at a greater rate than inflation, rely on time-tested theories, all that stuff over the long term. So the bottom line is this, although many people manage to build sizable amounts of wealth by jumping from one hot strategy to another, chasing the hot dot, the odds are against that your client who wants to follow in their footsteps, one wrong move and you're dead. Your portfolio value could, could do ir suffer irreversible damage. In the long run, buying and holding would probably leave you at least as well off, Mr. Klein, if not better, and it's a lot less stressful. Buy and hold is less stressful is the point of this. Buy and hold.